hello everybody. Um, thank you very much for having me. Um, as you can see here, I'm this crazy Canadian who's currently sitting in the United Kingdom. Um, I've been here though for 24 years and still haven't lost the accent. I always, you know, put it somewhere that I can remember where I put my accent down so I can pick it up again. That's a really weird English joke. Anyway, <laughs> um, so this is who I am. And you can always find me online if you have any questions later on. Um, and of course, I am missing you guys all in Istanbul because, you know, I absolutely love to come and speak speak there. And um, I promise I will try and not swear as much as I normally do, because the poor person who translates for me is constantly translating my swearing. Um, so right, what are we going to do? I'm going to turn on some SEO lights. Yes, that's right. Um, I know that there's a lot of paid media today. But hey, I'm going to go back old school and I'm going to make it SEO for you. And what did I do? Well, I came up with some top tips. But you know what? even numbers suck. So I had 12 tips, but then I thought, you know what? Let's just go lucky 13. Now in North America, 13 is an unlucky number. So <laughs> um, hopefully it'll be lucky today. And hey, we started early, so rock on. Um, so you can see here, these are the tips I'm going to go through. And of course, as usual, and as always with Digital Zone, the slides will be online afterwards. So you don't have to worry about taking screenshots or anything like that. You can actually get these slides and download them and read them later. But hey, it's all about the live experience. It's all about hearing what I'm saying about examples for each of these points. So the first point, and I think one that we really underestimate is the user journey. Now, I know as SEOs and as, as paid search professionals, we always focus on what uh, keywords we're, we're looking at, where we're landing the person. But what we often don't do is we don't stand back and think about, well, what point at the user journey is the person when they're using that keyword. So what are what are they thinking? What are they doing? Why are they searching? What is their pressure? So I always like to think about mapping the user journey through the site, because some people will be doing research and those are one type of person, but other people are going to be very, very focused in on getting the service. And if I've worked so hard and I've paid for my click, then I want to make sure that what I'm doing is I am attracting them to the right page at the right time. So think about everything through your user journey. Don't just think about your keywords and making the landing page match to the keyword. We have to think about the whole user journey because even if we're doing this by SEO and we think SEO is free, it's not free because time is money. The time that we take to optimize a page is money. And we have to be thinking about the fact we have taken time to optimize a page and time is money. So we want to be thinking about that, but also paid search. We all know paid search professionals are some of the most important people out there because what they can do for us and what we can do for ourselves too, if we want to learn, is to do PPC tests to make better SEO title tags and meta descriptions. So you can actually use Google's um, or, or Bing. I'm not, I'm not against Bing or, or Yandex or any of the other search engines, um, but you can use paid search to actually test title tags and meta descriptions for clicks to see what clicks will work. So what we want to be doing is we want to be thinking about what kind of um, message will attract people in the search results, not just on the PPC side of things. We need to be coordinating with people. So we need to be thinking about the PPC side and the SEO side. So use PPC to test SEO title tags and meta descriptions. Sometimes it doesn't always work. I've done some tests where the PPC title was awesome, but unfortunately it didn't work in SEO. However, if people are clicking in PPC, they're likely to click in SEO. So test, test with paid search. Don't just think about doing everything on SEO. Although apparently there's a really good A-B testing tool coming out from uh, SEMrush. Now, I always love to look at the competition. Don't only do this. So always think about what are we going to get 
out of this piece of research? Because, you know, sometimes I get asked by clients to do stuff and it's just because they heard somebody else want them to do it. Like, you know, certain bloggers online who have a lot of ghostwriters that they pay to write things. Maybe we're not naming any names, Neil Patel. But what we'll do is we'll look at the competition and see what exactly is going on because we want to be inspired by them, but we want to do our own thing as well. So we don't just want to focus on the competitors, but it's really important here for us to look and make sure we're covering off what the competition is doing. So I use SEMrush to uncover what my competitors' keywords are. Now here, I've used chocolate. Um, because I love chocolate and it's my favorite example. So I've used one of my favorite chocolate companies, Hotel Chocolat, and I've gone in and I've looked at some of their competition, like Green and Blacks, which is a, um, a large chocolate company here in the UK, and they are in the supermarkets. Um, and so it's a big competitor to Hotel Chocolat, who are in the airport as well as having shops all over. So this is something that I'll do with a client as well. So I'll make sure that I, I research what where no one is on keywords, but also always make sure you're covering off the competition because maybe, just maybe they have an idea you didn't have. I did some, um, some real estate, uh, weirdly. Uh, I did some real estate um, research once with a client who is one of the biggest real estate companies in the US. And they had completely missed, and I, I, I understand how, because the other competition was smart. They'd completely missed an optimization opportunity that one of the competitors was really leveraging crazily well. And when we did our competitor audit and we did our competitor research to see what keywords we were missing, and you can see here, I've, I've selected it so it shows me keyword opportunities that I've missed that the competition has. We found these keywords and they were absolute gold. So um, doing something like this can really uncover something you just never thought of. And the competition is really rocking. So you always want to be thinking about what can you do that might be different as well. Don't just steal from the competition. Make sure that you think things differently because there are questions people ask that maybe, just maybe, you can answer better than the competition. And really, which has more calories, red, white, or rosé? If I'm searching for this, I really need to know. I, I actually know, thank goodness. And I make wise wine purchasing decisions as a result. But people out there are doing huge numbers of searches. I have a client who's all about moderation in the consumption of wine or any alcohol, but they focus on wine. And this is the kind of stuff that is gold for them because they want to introduce their message into the audience, but they didn't know how to, to interject their consume wine in moderation message into the search results. Like no one's really searching for it much. So I said, well, let's look at the other side. And we used things like this. How many calories in a glass of red wine? It's a little, it's a little small, but you'll be able to download the slides and read it if you're really interested or have a client who's into wine, uh, who's selling it or distributing it. Um, but you can see here, the questions are key. People are asking Google and Bing, you know, which is the healthiest alcoholic drink? Red wine. I'm just joking. <laughs> but there are healthy alcoholic drinks. So we need to be thinking about, I mean, healthiest against other alcoholic drinks. Uh, we need to be thinking about what questions can we answer. And remember earlier when we were doing the whole mapping of user journeys, this is the perfect thing to use for a little earlier on in the user journey. They don't know you, but they should and you're answering their questions and you're helping people out. Um, and I have one really, really simple link hack for all. And I, I miss you guys all too. I really do. I miss being in the audience, walking back and forth and making the poor translation woman swear. <laughs> so I have one simple link hack and it's it's not really a hack. It's It's a trick people don't think of, but I am constantly talking to my clients about now, my clients will uh, often be companies. They're not SEOs. They're trying the best that they can do. They've got a dev company that they're working with. But, you know, everybody's trying, but they're not quite able to to do what they need to do to make things rank better. And I come along and I say, well, here's one simple trick and I'm going to make that page work. 
Yes, it is. Um, this is Kevin Indig's true internal page rank. And you can actually see his article there. I've given you a link. And don't forget, when you get these slides, you'll just be able to copy that, that URL and paste it in. So don't worry, you'll be able to get the slides. You don't have to type it in. But Kevin Indig had a really great idea with this true internal page rank. But basically, all I do is if we need to make something rank further in the site, I put a, an above the fold, really well visible, clearly clickable link on the home page, if I'm allowed. And that internal page within days will rank better if it wasn't internally linked to properly. I mean, if it was, if it's well optimized, you've got links to all the sections, you've got internal um, links that are cascading authority through the site, it works very well. But this, I've used this in e-commerce, absolutely phenomenal in e-commerce. On the home page, I actually have a, a, a little blob now, a little widget where I'm able to change, and it's not JavaScript, it's pure HTML, where I'm able to change the internal link at any time to boost any page I want. And it is absolutely gold because as the seasons change, we boost different sections. So I want to be thinking about that. Now I can see a question has come up about doing analysis that I'll, I'll, I'll hit at the end. So I will answer that in full at the end. Um, but I will answer you. Don't worry. So, um, internal linking, internal linking, absolute gold. I use this on every client. Don't, don't discard it as a silly idea or, oh yeah, of course, but I need something better. No, 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 no. If it's a season changing, if you need to focus on something, internal link, seriously, homepage to that page and it will bonus it. Honestly, I, I use this all the time. And e-commerce, if it works in e-commerce, it's going to work everywhere. I've worked in pharmaceuticals. We really don't need to do that sort of thing in pharmaceuticals. We need to make sure that we're just making sure that people can see drug-related information in pharmaceuticals. Um, and of course, in casino, we do different things. So we're looking for um, we're looking for changes that we can make to boost an internal page, and that's one of the best. But also, we want to make sure that we've optimized our title tags for it. So I always look at things that I can do. And this is a, a, a fun sort of idea. 13 SEO hacks any business can do. Number five will amaze you. Uh, maybe it won't. I haven't come up with the 13 SEO hacks yet because we're still going through the list. I don't remember what number five was, but maybe it was the internal link. Um, but you can see here it, it, we make the title compelling and it doesn't have to be just in PPC. But what I have done is I've gone into B2B clients and I do a lot of B2B, um, which is business to business. I do a lot. And I will go in and I will actually change title tags and change the rank of the page. Um, so it's not just about making them compelling and using PPC to test them. It's also about just thinking about optimization. And so I've put my tips in here because I think that optimization is um, an underrated tool in the SEO toolbox. If we put the keyword at the start of the title tag and make it readable and make it user-friendly and person-friendly, not just stuffed with keywords, I always find that it will actually increase the ranking of the page. As soon as Google comes along and respiders it, and I have a site right now that's a publisher site, and that is two people's jobs. That's all they do all day, every day, is they go through the site and they rewrite title tags. It is that important that there are two people whose full-time salary job is just rewriting title tags. Think about that. Think about how much money that publisher is investing in people in order to rewrite title tags. It is that important. So optimizing your title tags cannot be underrated. It is so important. If I do a link from the home page to a landing page and the landing page doesn't have an optimized title tag, I am wasting that opportunity. Now Google comes along to our publishing site multiple times per second and we're able to take it because you know we're a big robust publisher, but it's coming along and checking stuff multiple times a second. Now if we're getting tens of thousands 
of URL hits a day. That means that when your your site is probably not quite as hammered, and I'm working on a site right now where they have thousands of links excluded, thousands of URLs are not in the index. I haven't told them that this yet, so I'm not going to tell you who it is, not even the industry, because I haven't told them this yet. I'm still finishing the audit. <laughs> But they have thousands of, of URLs not in the index because their site is too slow. So you've got to make sure that everything is in line. Technical auditing is so important. Um, so optimize your title tag before you put that homepage link on, okay? Do not put that homepage link on until you've optimized your title tag. That's your job before you do anything else. Now, what else do I do? I love stealing my competitors' links. Oh, yes. Of course, we all do it. So right now I'm actually, we hired two people at a, at a client, different client, just to do this. Their, their job is nothing else but building links. We're also checking a rather spammy looking backlink profile that we're going to, uh, we're going to finish reporting soon. But um, yes, it, it's bad. It's really bad. <laughs> but um, what we do do is we look at the competitors and we check where they have links and we don't. Now, this is, again, Hotel Chocolat because I've never had a chocolate client because, you know, it's um, probably too expensive for them to use me because chocolate people do use, do use SEOs and Hotel Chocolat does use agencies because they're very large. So I thought I would pick on them. I mean, I thought I would um I thought I would give them the opportunity to highlight here where they could get links. There you go, Hotel Chocolat. There's some free work for you right there. SCM Rush, my friend. <laughs> I also use Majestic. Now for this I've used a screenshot from SEMrush, but Majestic is actually the one that I go to more often than SEMrush. SEMrush is actually really good for exports. It's fantastic for me to use with the intern that we've got doing link building, but myself and the manager, we use Majestic. Now you can see here that SEMrush has highlighted where there is overlap, but Hotel Chocolat or your client does not have a link. And those are the perfect places to target for links. And the intern right now on one of the sites is actually going after those sites for links. That's her main job right now is emailing them or calling them or just submitting on their site a link for one of our competitors who has a link across three three different sites, all have links from the same places. And I said, you know what? We'll do those ones first and then we'll do some extra ones. So that's a key tip. Also, what's my secret of content success? Because you know what? Links are nothing without content. Um, and the content of your site is so important. Now I know everybody says, oh, I'm so tired of content is king. It is king and queen because without content, what have we got? Well, we've got videos and pictures and Google can't understand those, but really we, we want to have content. And I have an e-commerce client and for e-commerce content is the one thing we're constantly changing. So what are my 10 tips for success? Because I had to have a 10 top tips for something. We can't go through 13 things without having an extra set of tips. So these are my extra set of tips, but some of them do overlap, like mapping your user journey also think makes you think about your audience. And we want to be thinking about things like what data can we pull in? We want to make sure that, of course, as I've said already, we have powerful, engaging titles, but we want to have evergreen content as well. We want to make sure we're not churning the content out. So the publisher site that I'm working on actually only does evergreen content. Their whole site is nothing but evergreen content. It's not news, it's evergreen. And think about it. We have two people who work on nothing but title tags on a site that has evergreen content. It's that important. So we want to make sure that we're doing stuff, but always, always, always socially promote and make things simple and clear because you want to be able to repurpose old content as well. If we write it well, we can reuse it, right? I mean, if we've written a really good article, we should be able to reuse it. Right now, I'm working on something that has worked for me before a thousand times. So what we're doing is we're actually doing a PR piece where we take a piece of research and we push it out to media. But that means it's of the moment. And for another client, we had done this and it was years old, two or three years old. And what we did is because it was timeless to a certain extent, 
we repurposed it and we ranked well again because we reinvigorated the content. So we want to be thinking about the content that we're building and what we can do with it. Now, we don't want to delete stuff because we can reuse it. We don't want to be getting rid of things because we can reuse it. Everything can be reused. So don't just delete a holiday page like um, Kwanzaa or whatever, uh, because Kwanzaa is over. Leave the page up, keep the link equity, and just update the page to say, thank you, and we hope you had a happy Kwanzaa or, or Christmas or whatever. Here's hoping to see you next Christmas, Kwanzaa, Eid, whatever, um, you know, uh, uh, come back in three months and we will have new stuff um, because people will find the page. And if there's something on it that's for sale now, it doesn't matter if it's a Mother's Day or Eid or, or Kwanzaa holiday. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They will buy it if it's compelling for them. Um, if you are a service um industry and you're doing holiday messaging, be a little bit careful because that does go stale very quickly. You can save the URL, but that does go stale very quickly. Now, uh, benchmarking is super important because if we don't know where we are, we don't know where we're going. So unless you understand where you are, you won't know where you're off to. And I've had clients where they haven't had a benchmark. I came into one client and they did not even have Google Search Console. And I was like, you, you've been running for how many years? And you've never validated your Google Search Console ever. No one ever did it. Wow. Are you sure? Okay. How did you know what you were doing? Oh, Google Analytics. Good luck with that. So what we did is we implemented Google Search Console. So it's very important. We don't know if we've made any headway unless we're actually measuring things. So know where you are and then know where you're going. Now, some people use Alexa Rank because they've always used that and they've been running for 12 years as a business, so they use Alexa Rank. However, it's really important to have some measure, even if it's Alexa, because it gives you where you are and it gives you where you are going to. And once you've gotten there, you can see where you've come from. Otherwise, you don't know what you've done. So always measure everything. And I promise you, I will get to these questions at the end as well that keep popping up on the side. Um, what are we tracking? I don't know. You know, don't just track links. Um, don't just track likes. Don't just track clicks. Track everything together in a group. So if you're tracking things and everything's coming together, then it'll be perfect. Now, uh, Google Search Console, I've always talked about. Yeah, everything's perfect. Once you've got measurement, that's all that matters because then you know where you've been and you know where you're going. Um, but we have Google Search Console and Google, uh, sorry, and Bing. Just, uh, so, sorry, Bing. Uh, we have Bing Webmaster Tools. Um, so Google Search Console and Bing Webmaster Tools help us track keywords. So if we're not in PPC and uh, Google Analytics or Adobe Analytics is super important if you're running PPC. Never just trust Google. If there's one thing that I know, it's that the clicks that they charge you for and the traffic you see on your website are never the same thing. <laughs> so um, for PPC, we need Google Analytics. For SEO, we need Google Search Console and Bing Webmaster Tools. Bing is a really good opportunity for you to see things a little bit differently. So Google Search Console gives us what keywords does Google see us ranking for where, but, and this is a really big but, especially for people like my publisher who rank for tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of keywords. On, on, on a page, they'll rank for thousands. You actually only get 1,000 lines worth of, of information that comes out per day. And that's not really super useful when you're working on a publisher, which is huge, or an e-commerce client, which has thousands of products because you don't get a full vision. So I actually rely on SEO Monitor to bring all of my content together into a single place with more than just 1,000 lines. So we need to be tracking everything in analyt and analytics. We need to have Google Search Console. But if we're an SEO, or if we just care about what keywords are driving traffic to our site, then we need, um, unfortunately, we need SEO Monitor because they will pull in more than the 1,000 you get a day. Because Google Search Console, I love it, but I'm sorry, guys. It's useless if you're big. 
It's only useful if you have a small blog like mine. <laughs> um, uh, so this is Bing, and I love Bing. Bing is super friendly. If you need to take screenshots for the boss, Bing is super friendly. Google is for nerds. Bing is for people who aren't necessarily programmers. Now, I've already talked about competitor auditing, but I think it's really important that we not only look at competitors uh, in links, but we're also always looking at where they're positioning themselves as far as the ecosystem that they live in. Now, look here. We can see here that Hotel Chocolat has a huge bubble of keywords it ranks for. Huge. There's a huge range of keywords it ranks for. However, if I was Thornton's, let's say, my green bubble is a lot smaller than Hotel Chocolat. Now, they sell a lot of overlapping products. So what does this mean? I'm missing. If I'm Thornton's, I'm missing something. But here with Hotel Chocolat, wow. So Thornton's has keywords you don't rank for. Lint has keywords you don't rank for. Green and Blacks has keywords you don't rank for. And Montezuma's. Montezuma's, little tiny British chocolate maker. No, they're not a chocolate maker. They're just a chocolatier. They don't actually make chocolate from the bean to the bar. Um, but little Montezuma's, little chocolatier, they're ranking for keywords you don't, Hotel Chocolat. So some more free advice for Hotel Chocolat. You need to be looking at your keywords, man, because you might be missing some, especially in the UK. So always make sure that you're looking at your competitors. And SEMrush, I love it because you can just take screenshots like this and say, hey, boss, look, we're doing awesome. Look at all the featured snippets we rank for. Arr, we did well. Um, but yes, it actually... Um, Semrush, if you work in an agency and or if you work in house and you need to report upwards, Semrush is brilliant. In the publisher, Semrush is used by the CEO, by by the head guy. And so because it gives you this kind of really easy to read dashboard, Semrush is just brilliant. But it also gives you a little bit of technical stuff. And I always think that you should be doing technical things. Now, I know that the CEO doesn't usually look at the technical checks page. However, he does look to see how many red dots there are and how many green dots there are. That's one of the beauties of SEMrush is you can make it so that the green dots are bigger than the red dots without really worrying about anything. And you can be using Screaming Frog or something like that in the background to make sure that you're actually doing the right thing. Now, Screaming Frog is my favorite. There's Deep Crawl as well. There's Sightbulb. There are all sorts of products that will do a site audit for you. Um, this is what Screaming Frog looks like. It's just um, a, a raw dump. This was my blog. Um, and so, <laughs> look, it's my blog. Um, and there's all sorts of things wrong with it. So don't look at my blog. My blog is the best place to look at if you want to know what not to do. Um, there are lots of spammy links pointing to it because I do a lot of testing. There's a lot of spammy articles on there because I do a lot of testing. So don't copy it for good. But if you're looking to test bad, copy it for bad. So um, you can see here, Screaming Frog gives you title tags. So you know what's going on with your title tags. It gives you if the page is indexable or not. It gives you all sorts of information about your site. So it's really important. So just make sure you hit these essentials because I've, I've come to sites that have existed for years and still have www and non www pages ranking in the index. That's bad. So these are the things we need to be checking. If www versions are, are ranking and you're a non www site, you really need to be looking at this. And server response time is key because it is, you know, it is something Google looks at as well. But I have clients with lots of internal links to bad pages. But really, that's a lot of stuff to remember. And you're going to download the slides anyway, so we can look at it later. But the last thing, the last thing, oh my God, thank God. <laughs> the last thing that I'd like you all to be thinking about is we have to measure the right things. Yes, we have to measure. And I know I've said we have to have analytics and we have to measure things, but we have to measure the right things. I've said already, likes are not a metric that you should be measuring. You know, it's not right. That's that's not a thing that you should be doing. Um, rankings, to my mind, are not really a valid metric, but the click-through rate from those rankings, which we're getting from Google Search Console, or if we're using SEO Monitor, we're getting a, a much better overview, um, is a really uh, good way of seeing if you're ranking 
for the right words. So we want to be looking at that. And also social media is great, but just having followers and and likes is not the most important thing. We want to be making sure we're actually getting conversions. We want to make sure we're actually driving people to the site that are right for that site. I've built links where I paid the blogger, whatever, a hundred dollars or a hundred pounds, and they drove a small, tiny amount of traffic, you know, maybe 25 people, maybe 50 people, but every single person converted. Every single person from one of the, the links I purchased bought something, which paid us back, not only for that link, but for a lot of other links that were not as good, let's say, because links aren't just about ranking. They're also, for me, always about driving relevant traffic. So I measure the traffic that comes from my links. I don't just buy links and put them out there and hope for the best. I measure the traffic that comes from my links. So measure everything, but measure the right things. Do not just blindly think, oh, well, I'll just throw a bunch of links up there and I'll buy a bunch of links from people and I'll do all the things and then I'll rank well. Look, all my metrics look awesome because, you know, sometimes they don't because the sales don't go up. And ultimately, this is about sales, isn't it? Ultimately, this is about conversions. It's either about a lead generation tool that will lead on to a sale of a large product. I've worked in um, B2B in the airline industry. Those sales cycles can take years, but we still need to constantly be getting people in. And you'd think, you know, there are only so many airlines in the world and they're not really new airlines coming through. So why do you need to optimize an, a site about software in the airline industry? Trust me, we do. You'd be surprised. So you really want to always be thinking about the end goal. And the end goal is those sales. Because without money, we can't pay ourselves or we can't pay our staff or we can't get paid. So think about these things. Think about the traffic that you're driving. Is it converting? Think about the links that you're placing. Are they relevant? Always think about these things and measure them because they are the most important things. Now, We've been asking questions, so I will now switch across perfectly, hopefully on time, 30 minutes plus 15 for questions, because I know you know me, I ramble on about questions. Um, and hopefully what we'll do now is go to the question bit. Yes? Uh, you can hear me now? I can absolutely hear you. Great. So you're absolutely on time. And 30 minutes presentation and 15 minutes for questions. It's amazing. And serious, it was very enjoyable to watch you again. And thank you so much for joining us. No and problem. I believe everyone uh, thinks the same. That's why I'm just always reading all the uh, reactions on the right hand side. And I can see all the comments. And yeah, you absolutely just increase the energy very much. So. <laughs> We have a lot of questions for you. If you like, yeah, you can yeah. just um, read it in the Q&A part. Or if you like, I can also read it for you. How, yeah, you there wish? were a lot that came through while I was going through. But one of the, the sections that seemed to get a lot of um, questions was the uh, link. And people wanted me to explain the true internal page rank um, example a little bit more. So shall I go back to that slide and in, and course, explain the the I'll go back and just explain the true internal page rank a little bit more because um, somebody asked, is it a different algorithm? It's not a different algorithm and it's not a different spider. Now, Google has a lot of different spiders for a lot of different things, but this true internal page rank, all this is is describing what Google is doing. So this true internal page rank model that uh, Kevin and Dig came up with, it is genuinely just what Google is doing. And it's only a small fraction of what Google is doing. So it's not, it's not a different algorithm and it's not calculating things out differently. It's all part of the whole. So everything, it's, it's really difficult to conceive of. And it's difficult for me to conceive of. And I've been doing this for almost 25 years. I'm, I am that old. I didn't do my normal at the front of the stage thing saying, and I've been doing this for over 20 years. Thank you for thinking I don't look that old. <laughs> but true internal page rank, it's 
The way that Google calculates out the value of an individual page is really complex and it's interconnected and interwoven. We people, we cannot simplify it enough for us to understand it. So what we do is we take out things and we remove bits that have only a small impact on the page. The thing is, if we remove 200 things that only have a one point impact on the page, we've just removed 200 things and that's 200 points. So it's really difficult to conceive of the multi-complex interrelationship of everything for a page. So what Kevin Indig tried to do here is what he's done is he's tried to show quantitatively how Google is doing this. Now, what we do is each page of a website has like a bucket of points. I always think about it like ping pong balls. So every page has a bucket and the bucket is full of ping pong balls. I know it's weird. <laughs> so each of those ping pong balls is like a point and it can give ping pong balls to another page by just picking them up through a link and putting them in the other page's bucket. Now, each link out from a page subdivides that bucket, right? So the bucket has 100 balls. If the page has 50 links, each link gets two balls. If the page has 20 links, each link gets five balls. But if the page has 200 links, each link only gets half a ball. And if it's no follow, it doesn't matter. It's still, it won't get the half a ball, but no one else gets the half that was left behind. Yeah. So each link divides the ball, the, the bucket that has the balls in it. And you take a ball and you throw it down. Now, Google does math on each link. Each link has a value based on how far from the original source it comes. So there are original set of sites that are editorially chosen. People, human beings pick them and they're changing all the time and no one knows what they are. From those sites, all of the ping pong balls into buckets come. So they are the source of all the ping pong balls. And from them, the ping pong balls come into buckets. Everybody's like, ping pong balls? Buckets? Links? <laughs> so all the ping pong balls come from certain sites. Now, your homepage has the most links, right? Generally. I'm not talking about spammy sites. I know you. I can see you and your link profile. Uh, so non-spammy sites, they have most ping pong balls in the homepage bucket. So the homepage is how I sculpt the rest of the site. Now, templated links don't get as many ping pong balls because they, they, they're not counted the same way. Footer links are not counted the same way. And this is where the math gets very messy. The calculation on the value that Google places on a page is how many clicks from the home page it is. And if you've got it in the in the menu, it's it's a much easier understanding, but Google still looks at the hierarchy. Now, yeah. if a page is buried deep, it's not going to get very many ping pong balls because it has to keep getting a, a lower and lower and lower amount of ping pong balls every page it goes through. And that is what this is. So this is just about how much value I can pass to an internal page. If an internal page is lagging, because you can see on this slide, it goes like big and then smaller and then smaller and then really tiny. And the really tiny don't get much value because unless they have links coming in from outside, all they have is internal links. So if I go from the home page and bypass two rows and go to the bottom one, that little ball cut suddenly gets big because all of a sudden it gets extra points because it has a link from the home page. All those ping pong balls go straight to that page. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. It's all about cascading internal link value by putting a link on the home page and putting it into a deep page that might not have the love because it is too many clicks away from the home page. An excellent person to read on this, Dawn Anderson. <coughs> So Don Anderson is an excellent person to read on this. So hopefully that explains the link thing. I know it's really complex. I, you know, there are full day courses on links. So um, I've just tried to do that in seven minutes. <laughs> um, so hopefully, I hope that explains the link thing. Um, question, if we have a niche sector, what do you do for how we do analysis on SEO content strategy and keywords? Because sometimes the sites have the exact same keywords. So I do use SEMrush a lot. And what I do is I go in and I put my, and I do work in B2B and our, our search volumes are like 10 a month or less. And it makes it very difficult to do research. But 
the I'm lazy. I'm really, really lazy. And I go into SEMrush and I put one keyword in. And what that does is it brings up another 50 or 100 or even 10. And I just keep clicking on those words and it just keeps expanding my pot. And what that will do is give me lots of extra keywords. And it will also show me who's ranking for those keywords. But I'll use SEMrush to just expand out. And then I use my brain to figure out whether or not they're the right keywords. I segment them into groups, and then I look at what pages might be right. And each of those keywords is going to relate to a different point in the sales cycle. So if we look at, I don't know, routers, like routers, routers that you dig things out of wood with, you know, routers that you take a block of wood, you put it in the router, and it, it makes a beautiful sign that says love uh, and out of a solid piece of wood because it's basically... Um, etching and engraving away at the wood. So I've worked with routers and routers are are like it's super expensive and they're not things that people search for very often. And I had to do keyword research there. And if I could do that, and it's spelled the same way as the thing that we use for the internet to split the signal on a, on a, a line coming into the house, a router. So a router and a router are spelled the same, but they are utterly different in size, shape, and functionality. If I can do that, you can do it too. Now, I know that SEMrush is a paid tool, but you can get a two-week free trial and suck all of the information out that you need. So if you're a small company or B2B, you can go in, use SEMrush or Ahrefs. Ahrefs is what our publisher, my publisher that I work for uses. Um, their content team uses Ahrefs for all of their research. So Ahrefs or SEMrush for keyword research, because, you know, when the competitors are targeting the same thing as you, you need to find something different. So hopefully yeah. that answers that question. Right. Um, uh, by the way, we have many questions. So maybe uh, we can choose some of them uh, yeah. from Tefik Mark. Maybe, maybe can you see the second one? And the, the second part, one, yeah, high um, high, positioning, oh, right. yeah, in the middle or s sentence of the key, yeah, okay. So, um, the keyword positioning does have an effect in the title tag. Um, in testing, I've seen that it does change in a in a very competitive market. It doesn't have that much of a difference. As long as you've got it close to the beginning, it's fine. In a not competitive market, so if you're working in a, a, a market that isn't very competitive at all, you're blogging about feng shui or, I don't know, something you can't sell, you're, you're blogging about wallpaper. If you're blogging about wallpaper, maybe it will make a difference. Because if you have the keyword in the middle, but not at the beginning, it may reduce Google's perceived relevance of the keyword. Because you, if you don't have it anywhere else on page, you just have it in the title, then that may make a difference. However, in most industries, it's very competitive. So as long as you have the keyword as close to the beginning as possible without making it look spammy, and you have the keyword on the page, and... You're also making sure that you have links to the page. It doesn't matter if it's in the middle or at the beginning. If it's at the end, it will have an effect because then you've got word, 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 word. It might cut it off at the end. Google is still bolding things for the searcher. So the searcher might see that it's not relevant. And people, you know, we're all lazy. I'm lazy. Everybody I know is lazy. We look very quickly at the search results and we scan them. So if we don't see that keyword match, we ignore that search result. So we also have to think about bolding. So front or middle is fine. End is not good. Is that okay? Yes, exactly. <laughs> uh, maybe we can have the two more questions. Yeah. So... Um, I think it's the first one. I test spam backlinks. Yep. Spam so yeah. the, they've tested spam backlinks, which they use for testing um, nearly 8K black backlinks at once. DA increased from 0 to 10 in only two days. Does that mean that Google will also index these black links before Moz? Google indexes everything before Moz. Don't look at Moz. Moz is useless, especially for backlinks. I love you guys. I really do. But I stopped paying for your tool because it stopped being useful for me. I'm sorry. Um, so 
your ma's domain authority is a really good thing to look at if you're a blogger. Um, so if you're a blogger and you're selling links on your blog, then DA is incredibly important for you because that's how you're selling your links. If you're a business, ignore DA. Look at Google Search Console. Use Majestic because Majestic will show you links you didn't even know existed because Moz just does not see them. Um, and Majestic is the industry leader. Um, use SEMrush. SEMrush will show you stuff that Moz doesn't because it discounted it as crap um, and stuff that Moz hasn't even found yet. SEMrush will find and you'll be able to look at and see. So each of these tools will give you something different, but Majestic is, is going to give you a much larger pool of links than Moz ever will. Um, and if you're really needing to do a, a detox, use Kerboo. It's a really weird thing to say. K-E-R-B-O-O, -O, Kerboo. They'll take an input from Moz, from Majestic, from mm. Google Search Console, and it will pull it all in. It will do an analysis on your links. And if you're really seriously worried, use Kerboo. It's expensive, but my goodness, it is worth it. I have done two major backlink detoxes with them and we skyrocketed the the rankings we absolutely went crazy awesome well when i was brought in i did that gave it to the client and i was completely honest and said to the client look this is what i'm doing and we gave them the the result i gave them a disavow file put the disavow file in within less than a month this penalized site was back up ranking in page one. So Kerboo is my recommendation if you need to do spam and um, detox for your site. Otherwise, invest in Majestic for a month and take a look at that as well as Moz and uh, SEMrush. But Moz is not my go-to for backlinks. SEMrush would be my, um, because I, I pay for it then, so I use it all the time. But um, Moz, sorry, uh, Moz is not as good as Majestic. If you're doing links, Majestic should be your only go-to for links, Majestic. Ignore DA from Moz. Google doesn't use Moz. In fact, Google engineers have had to put in their Twitter profile, Google does not use Moz's DA. Think about that. They've had to be that public, that they've had to disclaim constantly in their profile. They don't use DA. Don't use Moz to think about what Google's doing. It's not good enough. You have to be using your brain and all the tools at your disposal. Yeah, great. I also see Caribou before, uh, maybe just one or two months ago, I just see it, but I didn't try it, but I'm going to try for sure. Yeah, Caribou, I love it. Caribou is, if you're doing link detox, link okay. detox, or like a tox, if you, if you have a site that's taken a penalty, or you think it's taken a penalty, then Caribou, uh -huh. it's expensive, but it is worth every penny, because the amount of time I was saved... Uh, you could just add domain to, to disavow list by clicking a button. Oh, it's beautiful. It really is. Great. Uh, we still have many questions, but unfortunately, we don't have time. Uh, I can't even answer people's questions during coffee break now because <laughs> we haven't got a coffee break. But I'm on Twitter. And if anybody has any questions that they want to ask me on Twitter, just come on to Twitter and just tweet me and ask me. Okay. Great, Judith, really thank you so much. And it was very nice to see you again on Digital Zone uh, online stage. Mm -hmm. So I hope next time we will be see you in Istanbul. Absolutely, I hope so too. Thank okay. you so much, everyone. Thank, thank you. you so much, Goodbye.